My name is Teresa Parker. Um, I'm a psychotherapist and a, uh, a family therapist at St. Clair Center in Baraboo, Wisconsin. That's God's country. <laughs> St. Clair Center is a treatment and rehabilitation center for behavioral health. I work with people who struggle with both chronic addiction and serious mental health disorders in both the inpatient and outpatient setting. First of all, I want to say I'm very honored and very humbled to have this opportunity to share with you my passion for the work I'm privileged to do at St. Clair Center. St. Clair has been providing care and treatment for people with substance abuse and addiction disorders since 1985. After working in my field for over 40 years, I can affirm that those afflicted with drug and alcohol addiction and their loved ones are among the most wounded people on this earth. I have had the honor and great joy of working with this population for many years. God has given me the strength to follow him in this rescue mission at St. Clair. He has put into my heart the desire to embrace this wounded humanity. We know that addiction is a chronic and progressive neuropsychological disorder that leaves the person physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted and depleted what we see daily is the reality that chemical addiction hijacks not only the brain and the body of the one afflicted, but it also hijacks their soul. And so, here is a great need for renewal of hope. All of us have seeds of hope. It is a gift of our humanity. We desire a better future, good health, peace, serenity. We daily experience the reality that this hope is not something, but someone, and revealing his presence to those in pain and great distress is the greatest act of love we can perform. Like parched land, waiting for water, the world is waiting for those who proclaim this hope. And this hope is what I see the remarkable staff at St. Clair Center bring to those who are among the most in need. Yes, we are hope givers. Some may ask, what can love do? How can we bring hope in the midst of so much devastation? and loss. I would like to share with you a story of one moment of this precious hope giving that I have witnessed. But before I tell you this story, I would like to say that there are many moments of extraordinary graces we witness in the work that we do at the center. This is one that I will never forget. Through my work, I met a young addict we will call David. David was 21 years old. He was a heroin addict. He had been addicted to heroin for four years. He had overdosed twice and was brought back to life by EMTs and first responders who administered IV Narcan. Narcan is the medication that blocks the effects of opioids, especially in a deadly overdose. David had already lost four of his friends who used the same drug as he. This time, when he came to in the hospital, his doctors told him that he almost didn't make it back. He was told also that he had advanced hepatitis. David 
had been using drugs and alcohol since he was 12 years old. He struggled in school with an undetected learning disability. And his father had been an active alcoholic during David's younger years at home. This had damaged the family and torn it apart. Although David's father did stop drinking when he was 17 years old, it was already too late for David. He had been immersed in a family where the cunning and baffling power of addiction had ripped its way through the children's development, through the family life, and finally, the marriage of his family, marriage of his parents. David had progressed from abusing alcohol to many other drugs to cover up his feelings. By the time he was 17, he was addicted to heroin. On the first day that I worked with David, he professed that he was an atheist. Although it didn't appear that this was born of any serious study or philosophy, but rather grew from his anger at his parents. David had little contact with his mother and father. He had avoided contact with them for several years. He was sore. He was very hurt. And although they told him whenever they had a brief, strained telephone conversation with their son that they loved him, he did not believe them. He was too ashamed and full of self-loathing to even feel worthy of being loved. I remember the first day I worked with David at the center. He said to me, with his hand touching his heart, this is the cleaner version of what he said. <laughs> Why should I care? Look at my eyes. Can't you see I'm empty in here? David's parents came to family day at St. Clair a day that is a critical part of treatment for our patients and their loved ones. On family day, generations of family members are invited to participate in education and therapy with their loved one at the center. It is a day of miracles. I don't know who was more frightened as they approached this now rare contact between the adult child and his parents. The evening before family day, David found me and asked if I would protect him if his parents started to become too angry with him. I assured him that I would be there for him. During the morning group, I asked David if he could tell his parents about his inability to believe that they still loved him and that he felt that he was now unworthy, that he was unlovable after spending several years in the destructive grip of heroin. When he tearfully shared this with his parents, there was a river of tears and then his mother, followed slowly and pensively by his father, came over to their son and they cradled him in their arms. Only tears of joy could be heard in the room. The rest of us bowed our head in silence. I prayed. And then, I asked David's parents to tell their son everything positive that they knew about him since he was a baby and over his entire life. 
There were many tears in this precious moment of reconnection. It was so beautiful. I remember vividly the moment when David's body visibly softened and he accepted his parents' love. That moment felt sacred. That moment felt of God. That night, this young addict came into my office. He was hardly able to look at me, so I knew he had something very difficult to say. He stood a bit sideways, as if half coming in and half going out. And in a quiet voice, David said, Teresa, will you teach me how to pray? Although I have been asked this question several times before by the addicts and alcoholics that I work with, this time I was especially stunned because of the damage David had endured during the years of his drug use and at last his heroin use. Of course, I said, but can I ask you what has changed? You, you said that you were an atheist. And he said, because I believe I am loved, I believe that I am lovable. And now I want to know this God who loves me. He broke down and cried. I cried too. And that day, our Father in heaven was recognized by his prodigal son. His son had indeed been lost, and now he was found. I believe that I can, and you can, and I believe that we can all be hope givers. I have been so inspired by the powerful words of the great John Paul II as he cried out to millions of youth at World Youth Day. He said, I plead with you Never, ever give up on hope. Never doubt, never tire, and never become discouraged. Do not be afraid. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to enliven our hearts and increase our capacity to be hope givers. Thank you. And God bless you all.